Hi everyone, welcome to Crafting the Lion's Den. I'm She. Today we're going to be making some golden, sparkly, beautiful light up pumpkins. Before we get to that, I wanted to talk a little bit about Baby Loss Awareness Week. It's this week um, for 2021. Baby loss is anything that involves losing your child. It doesn't matter how far along that person was. If they've lost a child before birth, that is traumatic. It really is. And yet it's still not recognised as well as it should be that this will have a massive, massive impact on a person's mental well-being, their mental health, um, like through personal experience through people that I know, my friends, my family, they haven't had great experiences within the workplace. It's almost like there's a, there's a limit to your grief. There are, it's written out, how long can you grieve for and when can you grieve? It's, it's madness, absolute madness. I mean, until you get your, your Map B1 form, you don't, you wouldn't it wouldn't be classed as a pre, as a baby loss it'd be cast, classed as uh, a miscarriage and then you don't get the same rights as you would for losing a baby like what they would class as a baby anyway so i know my place of work if you <laughs> if you do have a miscarriage rather than a stillbirth then you're not entitled to maternity leave. You don't have uh, a cover like you would if it's classed as a baby loss, a maternity leave, so to speak. I'm getting a bit lost in my thoughts here. I know what I'm trying to get across and I hope that you can unravel what I'm saying. <laughs> but it doesn't matter how long that child has been in your body or if it's the case of, you know, going through an adoption and you lose that child, it's going to affect you. Some people more so than others. Some people may feel the need to every year signify that date. Others just, you know, want to accept it's happened, moved on, and their way of moving on is never think about it again. Everyone grieves differently, but it's going to have some, some sort of effect. And what's needs to change is places of work um, recognising that a loss is a loss. No matter how, ma how long it's been, a loss is a loss and people are going to be affected by it. Um, through personal experience, I this was years and years ago, I remember having a miscarriage and work then trying to stick me on for having days off because it counted as sick days because the baby wasn't far along enough to be classed as a baby in legal terms. Therefore, I was, I was entitled to no rights at all. And I had HR phoning me going, when are you coming back to work? And I was like, dude, really? Come on. And um, my line manager got involved and was like, leave her alone. Just leave her alone. Like, she just lost a baby. <laughs> You know, it doesn't matter how long, how far along it was, that's a baby at the end of the day and it's going to be traumatic. Um, so, yeah, I'm just interested. How many of you have experienced this sort of thing? Do you know people? I'm sure you would because this happens so much more often than we realise, than we talk about because it's not something that you openly talk about, is it? But again, these are things that hopefully one day we'll just be able to say what's on our mind, be able to say how we're feeling, what's happened to us, be open books, and people won't be nasty and use that against you. We want to live in a nice place, a nice world where everyone's loving and supporting. But how many of you have experienced anything like that? I'm really, I genuinely am interested to know, um, as it's something that you've been traumatised by? Is it something that you've just learned to live with and move on? Like, what are the stories? I'd love to hear them. Please drop them in the comments below. Uh, moving on from that, we'll go to what we're making today. And it is... La, 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 pumpkin! All right, can't see that again. <laughs> we need to work out how to make this be able to be seen. But look at this little pumpkin. It's so sparkly. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. So we're going to make this little pumpkin and there's baby clothes 
and it's quite elegant, I thought, you know, with the white and the gold tones. La, and the, um, what's that called? Jute, jute twine. That, uh, yeah, makes it all suffice. Hey, do you know what would, this would look good at? An autumn sophisticated wedding centerpiece. Oh, on the tables. Or is that just me? Anyway, let's get to the video. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye. I got some balloons and what you're going to see here is I'm going to blow the balloon up and then I'm going to let it go. I should have left the sound on for this really so you can enjoy that. And the reason I'm, I've just noticed, I'm so sorry, please ignore the stripping person in the background. I did tell my husband that I was filming but he clearly didn't realise he would be on film. So <laughs> anyway, so I'm blowing the balloon up. And then I'm letting it go and I'm doing this just to loosen it up because I'm going to be uh, playing with it. I want it to be a bit more um, <laughs> giving, so to speak. I'm terrified of balloons. I absolutely hate them. Um, I'm so scared of the noise when they pop. So I was trying to make it as flexible as possible. So by blowing it up to bigger than what I need, required it to be and then letting it go, it really did loosen the skin up um, and helped with what I was going to need it for and these were halloween balloons because you know why not <laughs> i didn't have any balloons on hand so i had to get them and then when i was getting them i was like well i might as well get some halloween balloons um and yeah so i'm blowing it up to a small size and then tying a knot now i've tied the knot right on the end so just to give it as much extra space as possible uh, rather than doing it right up close because then you're not going to get much give at all with that balloon so there we go see all that extra air that's in there that's not this is space that can be used for it to be stretched i've got a piece of twine and i'm going to attach it to the knot there we go and then slide that over i'm going to push that knot into the balloon so it's not sticking out everywhere <laughs> it's kind of like an umbilical cord isn't it <laughs> and then bring that string around and I want to get this really tight because my aim is to try and create a pumpkin shape yeah so this is why it was important to try and get that balloon uh, more flexible because if you do have it really really tight and the skin's so tight it's just going to pop on you and I don't want that because it's really really does scare me honestly so I'm going to work my way around the balloon with each piece of twine or jute whatever you want to call it and just working around until I've got that pumpkin shape that I desire. Just speeding it up now. So it's the same process again. You're just tying that string around the knot. And then tying it on the balloon at the other end. I've just passed it underneath the other string so that it keeps it nice and neat. Because you, I want all the knots to be together. You'll see why after. And then here's the next bit, working that on. Again, passing it underneath the other strings so that we can keep the knots all in the same place. You can see the balloon now is actually t starting to take shape in terms of looking more pumpkin-like. Uh, it's got those nice little sections that you have on a pumpkin and it's getting squished down because I wanted one of those like squat fat pumpkins rather than a tall skinny one. I do like a little short fat thing. They're so cute. And then this will be the last string. And again, pa passing it underneath and tying it at the top with all the strings together. This bit can be a bit, little bit fiddly and the balloon does want to fly off and do its own thing. But, you know, tame that balloon. Tame it. Make it yours. <laughs> so once you've got all those strings done, tie them all together. And you should have something like this. So with that knot at the top, I am just going to tie them all together by twisting them. Didn't need that other extra bit, so I've put that to the side. Twisting it round and round to get it all together. And it's also tightening them up, just making those segments even more prominent. And I'm going to take that section and I'm going to tuck it underneath itself. And it will hold under there with all the other strings. 
And there we go, we've got our beautiful pumpkin shape. Don't worry too much, it doesn't have to be super neat. Nature never is. So from there, I've now got a cup of water and my PVA glue. That's a big old lump of PVA, isn't it? I got that from Asda. Great value, absolutely perfect for what I use it for. So I'm only pouring a little bit of glue into the water solution because we're making our papier mache. Who else did that at school? You always had a balloon and you covered it in paper mache and then like painted it when it was dry. And it was just it was just awful. Like I don't know what it was supposed to be, just a balloon but in paper. <laughs> Mix that in using a uh, what's it called? Spatula palette thingy instead of my kid's pencil. <laughs> he still won't let me live that down. Still goes on about his pencil in the glue. <laughs> and now I've got some toilet paper. And I'm just placing it on the balloon and dampening it with the paste solution that we've created. And I'm just going to work my way around the entire balloon, um, dabbing on these bits of paste. So you don't need to go too thick. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah. Person walking around the background and he's standing in a towel. He said to me, make sure I'm not in the video. Don't post that if I'm in it. Well, don't come in the room when I'm making art and crafts. Anyone seen the Morgana show? It's brilliant. This really does remind me of one of the sketches in there where she's got a balloon. She's making a Garfield. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google Morgana show channel four. It was so funny. I loved it. So there we go. Keep going round and round your pumpkin, adding more tissue and paste. Keep going. And this is quite fun. I really enjoy this part. Just splat, splat, making a big mess. I'm so messy and this just plays right into my, uh, <laughs> I don't know, what would you say? A strength? Is it a strength? That I'm just uh, messy? Uh, because it's quite wet, you don't need to keep wetting it all the time. Just have a look. You don't want this absolutely soaking, but you do want it covered because when it dries, you need it to have enough paste on it that it's going to keep its shape and keep its form. So as you can see there, the segments are actually showing through. So where the strings have pulled them in, it has created segments in the, um, the well, the tissue that we're putting on top. What we do have to be careful of, though, is not overloading one area more than the other because if we do that, then it, we're going to lose that shape that we created with the balloon. I'm just splotting it, splat, splat, splat. Oh, my goodness, I can't talk. So <laughs> pushing it down. That's what I'm trying to say. Pushing it down. And I noticed there that one side had a little bit less than the other, so evening it up because... We want to try and make it an even coverage all the way around. When we do eventually do put our lights in there, the folds and the amount, the thinness or thickness of the sides will show through the lights. So we want to try and make it even. So I noticed at this point that the, um, the strings were sort of almost disappearing. You could see them, but with the more layers that I was adding, they weren't as prominent as I wanted them. So I thought, how can I make this come back? So I was having to think about it. And then I thought, well, we've got the strings. We might as well use them as a guide. So I then started pinching them. What I'm doing here is just covering the top because we do want that whole thing covered. This will be the top of our pumpkin. And we're going to leave a space at the bottom. We're not going to cover the bottom entirely because we do need to go out, be able to get our hands in there. I didn't realise how much I was shaking the camera there, bouncing that around. <laughs> yeah, evening it out nicely, squishing it down. And you can see there, they've still got a gap on the bottom, which is what we want. So I was quite happy with the shape. But again, as I've added more, it's lost the details even more of the strings. They are there, but they're not as prominent as they were. So there we go, just pinching the strings themselves and it's puckering up the tissue. So using the string as a guide and just pinching the tissue all the way down creates these lovely lines and defines the pumpkin. Obviously in real life, those lines go inwards, but work with what you got. And I think this gives it quite a nice effect anyway. 
So just work round the pumpkin, pinching the lines. And that bit needed a little bit extra tissue. Okay, you want the bottom to be firm enough and thick enough to be able to support the rest of the shape. So do bear that in mind. While we do need that opening at the bottom, we still need it to be thick enough so that it's going to hold the whole pumpkin up. You don't want it just to crumble. And they're just fine tuning by adding those little details of pinching. And there we go. Pretty happy with that. Yes, you're going to leave it to dry overnight. Ta-da! Next day. And look at that. It's completely dry. And tap, tap, tap. That is a donk, donk sound. I will just try and show you later on. So from here, grabbing a knife, and we're going to pop that balloon. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't. I, that was a genuine reaction there. I hate the snap, that sound. We're going to carefully pull out all of the strings. And check out what we're left with put the string to the side because you will need that we've got our hole at the bottom and it sits happily by itself cut off the balloon that's left on the strings because we waste not want not we're just going to reuse these string and the other side as well well that just fell off but we're going to keep that knot there and in fact i'm just going to add another knot in to make it more a little bit more neat to keep it all together because it did want to splay out a little bit so i'm just going to knot it and twist all of the string grabbing my pumpkin i'm so pleased with that it looks so cute and i'm gonna now make a hole in that top bit because this is where we want our stalk to come out of and yeah, you guessed it, we're going to use the string that we've already got and as a stalk. So I'm cutting a little hole so that we'll be able to pull the string through. And I'm going to go in from the other side and just pull it all through. Happy, happy. Little stringy, stringy. Excuse the state of my hands. I've just been painting and it's just everywhere, obviously, because I'm messy. And just using my little knife there to pull out all the last bits of string. I didn't want to make the hole too big because I want to make sure that it stays in there. And then you can see the knots nicely being held there. And I'm going to get my old friend, Mod Podge. And pouring out some Mod Podge. I honestly love this stuff. I think I'm going to do more stuff using Mod Podge. It's just fantastic. It's just like glue, but stronger. Like PVA glue. And I like the smell. Is that bad? It's probably bad. I shouldn't encourage... No, don't smell the Mod Podge. Don't smell it. That's a really bad thing to say. Do not smell Mod Podge. <laughs> I've got myself my glitter. And I'm coating the entire pumpkin in the Mod Podge. The reason why I've chosen Mod Podge rather than just doing another coat of PVA glue is because the Mod Podge is stronger and it will help um, the integrity of the uh, structure itself, it'll keep it in place. Uh, so just working my way around there, putting some glue all over it. When this dries, it will dry, also dry glossy because that's the gloss finish Mod Podge that I'm using. And that's what I want. I want a nice little shiny pumpkin. You can see there now how well those details of those lines on the pumpkin have stayed and are firm and they're pretty strong. I'm taking my glitter, and I'm going to sparkle it. Yeah. I'm just sprinkling that glitter all over it and all over myself. Because when I finished this, I looked in the mirror and I was literally covered. My face looked like I'd just dunked my face into a bowl of glitter, which I don't mind. I actually love it. <laughs> right, now that's glittery. Oh, no, no, it's not. Because I can see that it needs more. Yes, of course it needs more. It always needs more. You can keep going. You could do the entire thing in glitter, like make it full on sparkle. But for this, I just wanted an accent. I wanted to keep it white and then have gold on it because I thought that looks quite, you know, elegant. And yeah, very wedding-y, isn't it? Ha ha ha. And when you are satisfied. No, nope, no, still not satisfied. <laughs> yeah, carry it on. More glitter. 
Always time for more glitter. Well, I think I'm finally done with it. Uh, yeah, I am. Okay. So I'm just taking that Mod Podge and grabbing that string and coating it in the Mod Podge. Remember, this dries hard and shiny. So this is what I was aiming for. I wanted to sculpt this into the, the vine shape like a pumpkin comes off. So keeping it, trying to keep it together, twisting it and moulding it into the shape that I wanted, which was just a little twist, cute little twist. Of course, coming to think of it, I could have done more, added more on there to get a really thick, big pumpkin vine. I will do that in future. But for this one, it's just a cute little tiny one. Once you have coated your pumpkin in your glitter and you've done your vine and you're happy with the placement, you're going to leave it to dry overnight. Oh, that cheeky little string. It didn't want to get in place, did it? Uh, is it going to stay? Is it going to stay? I think it might. It might. Yeah, there we go. And there's the pumpkin. And I'm just going to leave that to dry overnight. And here's the next day. There is the beautiful pumpkin all dry. And you can see that string is beautifully held in place. You can hear the donk donk there. It's pretty solid. Got myself some string lights. And I'm going to just put those string lights into the pumpkin. Cut it there as I had a fight with the string lights. So <laughs> now that they're untangled, just feeding them in. And I didn't want to just plop them all in in one bunch because then that gives it a very um, situated, very light that's all in one place. I want this spread out along the whole pumpkin. So there we go. That's what it looks like. Oh, it's like that sparkle is no filter. That is genuine, just pumpkin being fabulous sparkle. That's beautiful. And now we've got to see what it looks like with light. Woo, and look at that. Oh, I love it. I love it. You could even make patterns in the tissue, couldn't you, if you wanted it to say something or whatever. But I'm going to leave it at that. That is some autumnal fabulous for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.